Mike, he's flying a typhoon. This is the first time I get to see it from outside the circle. I can look for whatever I think trim things are maybe improved here. It looks pretty nice from outside the circle, Joe. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen it this way versus uh, in the videos. Uh, that engine that exhaust report. That, uh, yeah. Well, it's running rich. I, I can hear that inside the circle. I like it rich like that, though. Boy, when you, when you get into that vertical eight, that thing kicks in like a mule. And when you run it leaner, it doesn't kick in as hard. I don't know. goes over the top or whatever with this. Yeah, that's got a nice exhaust note. What do you, it's, it's got a raspy exhaust note though. It's, it's louder than the 72. Probably it's got the 72 muffler. Well, it's good, yeah, but the, but the noise coming out of it is a bigger noise. Put more pressure into that little muffler. Yeah. It doesn't seem to change. I put the 91, mu I got Zambelli's little muffler in there too. Things to try. Wow, what's this wiggle woggle stuff? Man, haven't you been in training long enough? I haven't seen any of that wiggle woggle stuff. You get three laps in and you have to do a, a perfect stunt batter. So that's from all that test pilot. Well, Mike's a good learner. He's a quick learner. Yeah, well, we'll take the Z-Tron out. Well, that to me, it's a total contrast. Yeah. Yeah, the wind is starting to blow now, I can feel it. Yeah, it goes right through. You hear that kick in in the top of the vertical? That's what I like. See him backing up, so I guess I guess it didn't lose tension. Prop, I... yeah, there goes my prop. Say goodbye, nice prop. Back up, back up. Back. 
Oh dear. <laughs> I'm glad I got that on video, boy. Throw that prop away. Man, all you did was just take the pig off. Oh. Oh. Give me a little light of This hasn't been run yet.
I can't tell just how awful the conditions were. The plane's blowing around. In fact, it's blowing around right now. I'm not even touching it. But anyway, that was uh, what we're doing is at the end of the days when it gets really basically unflyable. We've been playing with the Z-Tron. I've been using it as an exercise because I really, uh, I really feel like the B-25 and the Typhoon eventually are going to have throttle control, be able to taxi, take off, and have some speed control in flight. Anyway, it'll be fun. And it really is fun using this thing. Now, as you can imagine, we've really been having a good time practicing with the Z-Tron. We're using tradition. Believe me when I tell you, you look at the video, you think, well, oh, like even on that last flight, you think, oh, just turn the throttle on. It, it takes, it's, it's more difficult than I can tell you. And certainly somebody with more talent than I am, uh, you know, they may adapt into it easier, but I'm being real conservative, and I certainly don't want to start fooling with the Typhoon. I have a little minor repair to do on a Typhoon here, not a major thing, but I thought I'd use the opportunity to, uh, you know, to my advantage anyway, while we have some unflyable weather. This is Dale Berry's I assume it's a cardinal. I know he had a cardinal kid at one time. And I assume this is his son. Anyway, we hope we'll be seeing him at the Nats. And as always, he's one of the one of the really fun boys to have around. You know, most guys from Georgia are not that much fun to be with. He's really a lot of fun. Just kidding. Mike landed on that last flight. <laughs> he chipped up a piece of my, my landing gear here. So it's not a big deal. What I have is, remember, when we made the landing gear, we had a set of spare wires. Well, how handy and convenient is that now? And I have another spare set of a little bit smaller wheels. And what I thought I might as well do, I'll make up another set of doors at the same time I'm doing this. Because, like I said, we do have a couple of days where it's unflyable here. It was unflyable that day we were flying at Z-Tron. But anyway, within the next couple of days, I want to make up another set again. I want to have the grass gear, because basically from the end of this week on, we're going to only be flying at the Circle Burner Field. We lose this tar field then to Labor Day. And the, the gear for the grass need to be just a little bit further forward with just a little bit bigger wheels. And we've gone to having inch and three quarter wheels on here. And that's been really nice on tar. I have to tell you, I, I really do like that. But again, we've lost a little bit of the inside turn. Every time you make the wheels just a little bit bigger, and I'm not sure I understand what the aerodynamics are, but I know this happened to virtually every plane I've ever done it to. I make the wheels bigger, the inside turn gets mushier, top of the hourglass gets a little mushier, other things get just soft, not undoable, but soft. As soon as I put the thinner or smaller wheels on, and you can see these are electroflight wheels, these are thinner, they're about half the weight of the, the real one, what I call the real ones, the scale wheels. But we've been flying with the scale wheels just because we've been wanting to have some fun. Anyway, that's one of our projects for the week coming up. Now today we got a bunch of Z-Tron flights. Mm -hmm. What I decided to do, I have a dedicated video of all the Z-Tron development flights. It's tape three rather than get this confused. But I did want to mention one thing to the other people that are using Z-Trons and might be good information. The, the battery that's in here lasts, so far it's lasted four of the batteries. Now each battery, we haven't been flying this yet, but, it, but in tradition we have the, the little MiCAD packs they go about eight, nine flights, depending on how many times you cycle the throttle. I've even gone a whole day with one battery. But what happens is I wanted to see how long it would take for this battery to go dead. And as an easy test, you just come over, switch the switch, and see if the Z-Tron, if it's moving the servo, you know that battery's good. But we finally killed this battery. So while I had this here, I'm going to leave it on charge overnight, because we have our, co our club contest coming up this weekend. Kent Tyser, Dave Midgley. Bob Dixon, a bunch of other people, and I wanted to have this, well, at least that we could have some fun with it the day before the contest. This came in today's mail from a good friend of mine, Dennis Bieber, yeah, and he did a real neat thing. He found some Vico spinners for me, some two and a quarter inch Vico spinners, 
that I may need for, uh, well, for final trim in the, uh, well, well, again, we're going to see. They're cast, though. They're not spun, and a spun one's a lighter, so I'm just going to keep them as spares for now. Send Dennis down some video, and hope he enjoys it. This has a Fox 35 and a big Jim V-deflector nose. Nice plane. I'll pass it on to Stunt News. Well, I'm going to start making up the grass gear. Now, what I wanted to show is how much further forward the axle is going to go for the grass gear. You can see where the axle, it's, it's pushed forward quite a bit, in fact. And I'll, again, I'll take the ruler, true up once I know. This is my reference for the, the gear, and they're working perfectly on, uh, on, the, gra on the blacktop. But for the grass and where we will fly in the rest of the flights until the gnats get here on grass, so we want the, the gear just a little bit further forward. Two wires. They match, and we know how much further forward they are than the pavement gear. A crucial thing, I know the angle forward is, I want to make sure I have them both completely. See, I've already done this, but I want to check because memory sometimes has a wire. And once you actually take and put all the details on, the problem is then you bend it and the stuff all cracks. So we want to get this right, right from the beginning. It looks like we've got it so far. But don't forget, we spent a lot of time in the actual, actually when I did get and made this set of wires up. So we know we have the wires in perfect shape. Now we can make up the doors. Because we've already done the landing gear on video, and I would just say refer to that video. I'll do this off camera. But I want to come back to this when it's actually time to do our first flights on grass. And we will not have the advantage of having the two sets of gear. You don't have to go back bending them every time you're on grass, on pavement, on grass. And if you try to pick a mean average spot, then it doesn't land on grass or tar right, either way. But having two sets of gear, and ones that are set exactly for pavement, ones that are set exactly for grass, this will be a real, a real good advantage. And another advantage is, if you're ever at the Nats or a faraway contest and you break a landing gear wire, well, you could at least get by with the other set of gear. And that has happened to people. It hasn't happened to me. It hasn't happened to me yet. But, but that they've basically been sandbagged because they didn't have a spare set of gear. So we'll do this off camera. We'll come back to this the next time we're, we're ready to go fly. Today's mail, I got a, what to me is a priceless photo from our friend now who, who knows who I am and who Bobby Hunt is. And <coughs> I'm the handsome one, by the way. Anyway, kidding around a lot, but listen, Ty, this is from Ty Mariucci. Got to tell you something. This is a priceless picture to me. And I flew this plane in 1966-67, had a Tiger 60 in it. Now just, just imagine where the event went 10 years later. A little bit of the vision. It's called the vision. And I don't have any. Anyway, but now we see the vision in four strokes. Hmm. Might take 10 years for the people to catch up. It's okay. That's where people that can see the future, like, uh, I don't even know what the guy's name is. They got to predict the future. I'm not him, believe me. Anyway, I really appreciate the photo, and we got work to do in the shop today, getting ready for our big, we're having our big contest weekend, and having guests come up from North Carolina, Georgia, and New England. So we got to get ready. Now, while Larson actually made the arrangements that we got a nice supply of APC propellers now in sizes that may or may not be appropriate to the 72s, 56s, and of course there's the one, the killer one we're really looking for. And if you've never used APC propellers, there's a couple things to keep in mind. Number one, they are extremely efficient. In, in the events where speed counts, these usually wind up being the winner most of the time. They have a unique airfoil section. It's not a Clark Y, and you can't measure it off a pitch gauge. You can't really measure it the way you would measure a, uh, say, a Zinger or whatever. It, they don't have that flat section. But they're extremely efficient. Now, the deal is, what we're going to try to do over the next couple of weeks is work on what prop will work best on the 72, the 56, and of course, in my case, I'd like to have one for the 91 also, so that we can get 
the people at APC Propeller, and they, they seem very willing to make a mold and make us a prop to our spec, but we have to do the depitching, pitching. And by the way, when you want to depitch these, what you do is you heat them with a hairdryer and right to the point where they change color, and that's the point at which you can change the pitch. So we're going to be having, I just think, a real interesting weekend. We have Woody Midgley coming down with the new carbon wing plane. But working with the APCs, this is going to be a whole other adventure in prop technology, and if we can get a molded prop that will work on all three of the, the Sados that I'm working with, Boy, is that going to be one big step ahead for next year. That'll be something when somebody buys a 72 or 56 and they can get a prop that's a bolt-on. Boy, that'll be light. You know. And the one thing I want to say, never even think about in your wildest dream flipping an APC propeller by hand. This is, you could shave with this edge of the prop. You can see how accurate their molds are made. And the material holds an edge so well. This is part of the reason APCs are so efficient is their razor blades. Take a look at the back of a zinger and see what I mean. Yeah, this is the reason they're not real efficient. Well, because you can't make wood that thin. That's one of the reasons. But there's advantages and disadvantages. And while I'm waiting to finish up my replacement gear, this will give me a nice challenging project to work on, especially if I have some flying time in the next day or two before the big, or even after the big contest. We will have APC props one way or another by the time the Nats comes around. We'll figure that part out, I hope things is all the APC props come almost, I call them AB, almost balanced. Two, three swipes of the sandpaper on the back of the heavy blade and they're dialed in. I open up the, the shaft size to the Sato size very carefully with a reamer or a drill and I'm making up a whole batch to be tested the next test day we're going to have. just came in today from England and this I think is our EAT prop, a hand carved prop for us. Just to the total, total idea, right, these, these cost six six dollars and a quarter each with the shipping by the time I paid the shipping. Just some of the sizes and he's willing to make custom sizes so that's really, this fellow's in England, let's get his address up here. It's EAT props I'll leave that up here so you can you can look him up on a web by the way. He's got a website. But take a look at some of the workmanship on this prop. Now this is a 15-4. Hand carved. These are really one of a kind props. And I also got a 15-3. Now I by looking at this, I'm thinking this is they're measuring pitch maybe in a little bit different way than I am. They look like they might have too much pitch, but we're going to know, again, once we try them. And he's balanced right out, right from the guy. So I would I would like to put a different finish on them. That's one of the things I'm going to do in the next day or so. But I want to work first with the APCs. Now I'm hoping we're going to see this plane in action. Tom McLean will, is tentatively going to be up here this weekend for our contest. And I'll read you his little note. Very interesting. He has two tails for the plane. One is a flying tail that pivots. And he flew the first, let me read the note, the first six flights with the standard tail with elevators. And then he went and switched the tails. And I like this take apart construction. You can just switch the tail to the flying tail. And he said, it looks like it has real promise. He, he definitely will have it at Brodax. And he says he's definitely going to bring it up here this weekend. But he found that the mean average cord had to be further back than he first anticipated. He was looking at about 25%, which is not really radical. That's, that's probably the back end of what I would be using, too. Um, he doesn't say if this is his franchise twister or somebody else in the club. But here's one of my favorite people. You've got mail. From the old days, Scott Richland. And Scott, I hope we're going to be seeing you at Brodax too. From Tom McLean. I wanted to pass another little, a little thought that I had on here. What I'm doing, I'm painting the invasion stripes on a new gear. And one of the things I thought 
little details. I'm going to let that dry for a little little details. Let's see. It's still wet. The little details I could do is I could make this look a little more realistic. What I did, I took a little piece of aluminum tube, and when I cut that to length and put that over there, it'll make this look more like what that strut really should look like. So just little details, trying to finalize some little details on this grass set of gear because next week we're going to be flying on grass from this point in the season on. We just carefully cut this with a nice new XL blade. And a couple of drops of epoxy will hold us in place. But this I hope is going to, and it's the details, I always think it's the details that really set planes in the top couple of rows apart. You see we got to shorten it. I wanted it to be a press fit. I'll just get this shortened with a little sanding block. But it's just a little piece of half moon of aluminum tubing. I ran it on the belt sander. I've tried to cut this with a uh, with a saw and uh, every other way. It's just easier to grind it away. But the reason I didn't want to use hot stuff, if a, if a drool goes down the landing gear leg like, while well, it's kicking off it, it might be a problem and ruin the paint with the epoxy. I can I have a little bit better chance of controlling it. Notice I didn't say a perfect chance. Hey! Get out of here. that a press fit. I think that gives it just a little more realistic look once that dries. A different, it, it really brightens it right up having that little piece of aluminum in there. What I did, I put some shading accents on just to try to make it look even more three-dimensional. Now I gotta wait for that to dry before I go on to the next step. There's all little details. A lot of people don't do them. That's fine too. But if you want to have that model, it's just a little cut above. You got to have something, I think, just a little bit more detailed or just a little better in some way. See, everything that highlights it just makes it look even more detailed than it really is. What I try to do here is ink in what would amount to be the seal. Just using an ordinary ink pen here. next step of a detail, then I try to lay the two parts together and say, which one do I like better? Do I like it better with this look, or do I like it better with this look? So, it gives me a lot of choices now. I always go back and paint this white if I like this one better, but I kind of like this one better. I kind of like the detail on that. Use the airbrush a little bit more to try to, try to just highlight this. I don't know if I like this or not. I'm going to have to see when I get the clear on, but it certainly does look like the scissor is a little more realistic than on the other gear. And, and again, the point is if we don't like it, a month from now, a day from now, a day before that, we just paint it white. But we do have now, and we're going to just be waiting now for uh, the time when we're going to start flying over grass. We'll get some clear on this off camera. And we do have two sets of gear now. It's a good redundant system. trip we went to a, as we always did to a dollhouse supply place and I found this little pack look at the size relative to my thumbnail a pack of camel cigarettes and the next time I have to take the plane apart to get in at the cockpit I'm not going to take it apart just for this but somewhere in the cockpit I'll put a pack of camel cigarettes I think that'll be uh, a nice little detail 
so amazed how they can make some of these reproductions. Anyway, and this was from a dollhouse place called Multi Minis. But they have them at all a dollhouse, but not recommended for typhoons under five years old. But anyway, we'll be working on that detail next time we take the plane apart for maintenance or, or just to see if the screws are tight. And I need, because we know from the past, landing on tar at the nets, we usually wear out a couple of sets of wheels. So what I did, and, and one of the little details, I don't particularly like the way these wheels look, but they are the lightest wheels. And so as one of the choices, I take a Sharpie marker, and they do make one for laundry that's a little bit better than the other one. And I think just one more little detail that you can use to, uh, you can use it on any plane. It doesn't have to be a, a semi-scale plane. And if it, if it washes off or, or comes off because of oil and, you know, and so see, now I like the way it leaves the corners. It makes it look three-dimensional. But, but just an idea of, you know, what looks better. I used to paint, put dope in there. You never could get the edges equal. And the paint, as soon as the oil hit it, it would come off because dope doesn't really like to stick to this type of plastic. But the Sharpie marker, you can do it just before you go to appearance judging even. Just one more little detail. Details, details, details. I got to try this, well, maybe not this weekend, but coming up is, this is a 14 inch three blade that Randy Smith sent me up. One of the problems that, I thought it was a problem or not, I'm just a little gun shy of, it looks like they've added pieces onto this. I'm not sure, I, I emailed Randy to see if I could find out. That, that that looks like kind of a funky joint out at the tip there, but again, we'll find out. Now the worst that can happen when I'm done balancing this, if it gets too thin, I'll just make it a 13 inch prop. It's really a, about a 13, I don't know, maybe more than a half. But the problem is, then out at the tip, it's got almost no pitch at all, so I'm gonna have to pitch it. Well, anyway, it gives us one more choice, and believe me when I say, I wanna have all the choices. And this may be perfectly okay, I, I guess, again, we're gonna find out. I'll balance this off camera, get this ready, so we have all the stuff we want for this weekend coming up for the big contest, Fun Fly Weekend. We've waited years to see the carbon copy, and <laughs> Woody picked this color out himself. Oh, I did. <laughs> Big <Jazz> idea. <laughs> this is the worst so paint job the I've ever seen. What's my son doing? Make Woo, I think your son's on movie. drugs. You better send him to rehab. Woo! At least this this is the whole loudest plate I've ever seen. Man, wow! I've done a lot of work on it. Now this is this is the carbon fiber wing plane with. Carbon fiber gear. We need a carbon fiber. Oh, you got a black spot. Oh, yeah. Oh, you lucky what dog. carbon fibers I can make? Oh, make it all carbon fiber. The Carbon Copy by Dave Midgley. Copied by Woody Midgley. When I saw that in green, I couldn't believe it. Oh, well. I'll tell you, I thought drugs died out in the 60s. This is unbelievable. No, it was so. better yeah, well. if I put clear on it. You would have uh, seen it when it was dull. Oh, jeez. Oh, the carbon, anyway, what we're gonna do, we're gonna do a little bench trimming pre-flighting on this. It's pretty much balanced, I think. Kent and uh, Bob Dixon are on their way up from North Carolina and Georgia. We're gonna all get together tonight for a big pizza and a, well, what do we gotta do? Put the tip weight box? Did you weigh it yet? No. Ask. What, hey, it's what it is. What <laughs> the hell am I supposed to do? <laughs> we'll fly it tomorrow. It's gonna, be, it's gonna be in the air tomorrow, buddy. After weighing it, what we found out is it's 72 ounces with, these are I think two and a half ounces and we may take that off and put a tongue muffler, well, that'll get it down to 70. And you said you have an ounce of nose weight in yeah, here? There's an ounce of nose weight in That'd there. make it 69. So you're, for all purposes, it's 70, 71 ounce plane, but this is an 800 inch wing. And it's a thick wing. If you look at the airfoil, that's not a, I think it's a, sick, a full 64 inch span too. But anyway, we're gonna find out Showtime tomorrow, baby. Showtime. It didn't take on a good color until we put clear on it. It was terrible when it was mm. done. But what you could do we with this, it out. you could put masking tape right here and wipe off the paint with acetone. Yeah. 
And just leave the wings black and put white letters on it if you wanted to. Do you know what a job it was to put these stabbing elevators on this? Oh, yeah. Work? Yeah. Hours. I know. Oh, yeah. Hours. But now, what else is there to do? We got the tip weight in there? It's no. balanced? It so, balances so real good. Lines, that's all. They make up a set of lines and we're ready to fly. I got lines. Okay. We're ready to go. Drive from Georgia. First off, who did all the driving? Yeah. Who did you think? <laughs> <laughs> did he do any drive? You know, when I drove to Atlanta, Joe Ortiz reached over and touched the wheel and said, Okay, I don't want you to say I didn't do my share of the driving. <laughs> uh, is that bird going to buy the. You're not afraid of bird, are you? No. no, no. no. He's not afraid of you. I got news right. for you. <laughs> He's eyeballing you up, baby. He says, Here. This guy looks like toast yeah. to me. Here is the return. Okay, the return. return. Of Andy Loner tapes. Oh my God! Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> I told you he was a coward. I thought you weren't afraid of him. Peeps <laughs> just, <laughs> Peeps anyway. just took his arm off. Get him, Pete. Get him. Come on, Pete. No, no, no. Go for the throat. Here you See go. if you can peck an eye out. Here you go, Wendy. What are you? Oh, Peeps. Peeps. For the peeps. Oh my God! Dig, dig one out for Peeps. <laughs> dig one out, Kent. Get a razor blade. Peeps. All right. Look what we got. And Wendy, what else you got? you from Kent and I? All right, I'll take it. A gift certificate? Oh, look at this oh guy. My oh, God. my God. Well, you know a quality paint job when you see one. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Hey. We can award this at the contest. We don't have to. Oh, what, we got a picture of you? This you can take that one home with you. That's right. <laughs> that looks oh, great. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. Now, how'd you do that? That's the one that's in stunt news. Uh, oh, that's nice. Taste, yeah, man. but this is yours that you sent me. Oh, right. Well, we'll hang these up in a shop. That's great. They're, they're for you. I don't have, you know, you see the Tom, picture? remember us by. Bob, look at the shop. You see all these top uh, five pictures? <laughs> now, to be in my shop, you got to be. <laughs> I can tell we're out done no, already. You know what we'll do? Let's do this. Let's take Dudka's face, cut his face out. We'll put your face up there. You guys look alike. Uh, yeah. Sorry, Lou. <laughs> Oh man, hey, that's really nice. No. Okay, we, all right. We thought we'd do that. Uh, now, the things we got to know. This is important. We have a complete we photo processing center. Wow. Yes, and this piece. I don't even know this on the way. way. What is that? This is my new digital camera. Oh, we're going to use that. Tom McLean's coming up with his F104. Fucking thing. Oh. I can take 286 hey, standard movies with it. Mm, hey, these are good. Hmm, Pete, yeah, you're Pete. messing out. Where are Pete's? Pete's doing guys. He picked up towel. the whole thing, carried it over there on the blanket. <laughs> He's got a whole one. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> He's got a whole one. Yeah, he put it on the Did box. Did he? Did he? Did he carry it over there? Yeah, he carried it. Good to see you doing that. Oh, Peeps. Look, he's got the whole... <laughs> They're good, aren't they, Peeps? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Peeps, you're too bad. So you guys had a good trip, huh? It was a good drive. We had what time did you leave? 5.30. Oh, shit. This morning. I left at 9 to here at 1.30. I'm full. Bob, you have a lifetime Two friend here. Hours. You have a uh, lifetime friend. Peeps, just don't bite me in the arm. Yeah. Look, at, look at him open that up. Right. Look at, oh, that thing will be, sure 10 so minutes from now, that thing will be inside of him. <laughs> <laughs> Professional photographer Bob Dixon is going to take some professional quality pictures as Kent Tyser unrolls the professional B25 play. <laughs> Woody, you're going to have to get out. Well, oh, Woody, he steps on Dave Downey's plane. Yeah. Dave Downey's going to send you a hate mail, man. Oh, come on, check it out. Oh, my God. Now, you know what they do at bowling? They pin it up on a wall and then they sit there and do this. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> was small, right? I was going to say. Look at that nose section. What's going to hold your ass on the ground when this thing gets you? <laughs> that, is, that is, forget about it. The B-25 in inverted flight. Look at this. Hold it. I got it in inverted flight here. Yeah, you got it in inverted flight. Look at that in inverted flight, Bob. Tell me that isn't cool. Right. Oh, man. Oh, my God. Even you would like that. Unbelievable. So you guys really know your stuff. There's just there's just no faking you guys out. Okay, now we got some. This is a great announcement. Bob Dixon, Mr. Key Punch operator over here. General Champ has uh, graciously allowed him to take the fuselage and tail to the Mustang that we've had in our possession for ready. And he now he's making a commitment. 
Bob, this is how you make a commitment on video. I, Bob Dixon, will finish this model to the highest level possible, including cockpit detailing, proper control system, will not be skimping on control systems. Yes. This model will be front row, not second row. I will have a complete cockpit detail like Strega, perfectly buffed mirror finish from Windy Videos. <laughs> All right. He's writing Gerald a thank you letter. You better. Where did that fuselage go anyway? Maybe we haven't seen that on video in a while. Okay, Cat, what are we doing to this plane now? We got to put wheels on it? Oh, yours you got to put wheels on. Still looks good. This is a good flying. George Aldrich, you know, the only one George Aldrich watched that whole Nats video? And he said, the best plane out there is that guy with the Strager. And it ain't yours, Wendy. It's that other guy. <laughs> the guy that talks funny. <laughs> Yeah, she still looks good, baby. You still got those expensive wheels on there, those yes, car wheels? They're starting to wear out. Boy, that's a southern technology thing. It uses NASCAR wheels. Yeah, they're wearing out. You're right. I had an extra pair of them I could give you, too. I tried to buy them at the hobby shop. They didn't know what the hell I was talking about. Yeah, yeah. Didn't know what I was talking Central about. Central Hobbies. See, this is what you could get me. Get me some of those Macaulay decals. You can't like, find them anymore. <laughs> that's right. Seriously. Somebody probably found out they weren't good on stunt ships. <laughs> they discontinued them immediately. See, this is what I don't like, is these, that you see the screws. I like when, when the thing is all, you don't see it. That's beside the point. All right. Is Gerald a Panther member? Yes. Oh, but Wendy, like I said, I've got a little... Gerald drives a bulldozer for a living. Places like right. So I'll fool with them. Yeah, let's see. See, this is a typical wood airplane problem. You don't get that with carbon fuselages. Where the thing joins. No, but this is where it's... Well, what you could do is make tsunami kind of valve covers on there, but boy, that's labor intensive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can't put the exhaust stacks there because the way you've got this vented, they'll be right where the vents go. I mean, you could do it... What Jack of one did, he put them further back here on his string. Take that out and lower it. No, yeah, where are those stacks? I gave Bob a couple stacks. I mean, what I'm saying is you, it's difficult. you got to think about it. Anyway, these guys want to go tomorrow to the Statue of Liberty and take some pictures for stunt news with the Statue of Liberty in the back. But by the way, there's the real Strager, in case you ever want to see him. <laughs> You've got a lot of Stragas in the cellar over the years. Yeah, that side would look fine. That side would look fine, but the other side is going to run into the tank vent. And you know, see what I mean with the tank vent in the way? Dear Gerald, I promise that plane It'll will be, be five on one front one row. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're going to have an eleven-cylinder engine instead of the amazing eleven-cylinder engine. Exactly. Now, I got an idea for you. I just was thinking of something. Down below with you know what you should do with this General Champ Mustang fuselage? You should make too low, probably. build a wing to his plan, and you know what? You should make a version of the Red Baron. You should make a new version to commemorate Zambelli turning the Red the fourth Baron fourth into popcorn. The fifth, <laughs> between the fourth and the fifth one. How about the Miss America version? Red Baron. Ah, Miss America. <laughs> Red Baron, look at this. Red Baron, look at here's Champ's picture. It's right here. Champ, he's gonna do this. He's gonna do it. Look, Red Baron. Out a little bit. Red Baron. Red Baron. Red Baron. Yeah, I can. Anyway. Put it come between the fourth and the fifth one. Put it between it. I just wouldn't want it to come over on top of him. He's promising, and I want this on tape over and over. I am gonna hold him to this. Gerald Champ did an absolutely magnificent job. We had this at Brodax last year. People were drooling. They were offering me money, offering me a swap for a minivan. Yeah, I did what you end up with. This is absolutely beautiful. Now, will the Sato 52? Sato 72 will fit right in there. 72. And we have two left from the last dozen. Can you imagine? In fact, Champ's got one coming. Okay, you got the tail. Oh, man. Now you got to build a wing with dihedral. You can't make a straight wing in a plane with this. Got it. Dihedral. You got it. You got to get the plans from Joe. You got to lay this all out properly. Don't I have to look like? You don't have the wing plans for the wing. Joe's got them. 
Yeah, you would have oh, look at his tails. Oh, look my God. Look at that spinner, huh? Whoa. Whoa. Look at that straggle. These guys can't figure out how to get. I'll tell you, it's just another night at Wendy's. Some days it doesn't pay to be Wendy. Throw him at that, Wendy. Yeah. Wax. After four gallons of wax, he's trying to cover up all the mistakes in the plane. Let's point out some of the errors in the plane. <laughs> Notice he used decals. You, you believe this? A front, he wants to be in the front row. Decals. He doesn't believe in buying a windy video. Shows you how to see. If you do Wendy's way, you can't rub your finger. You don't feel that. That really does look good. You were in the second row last year. You're 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 creeping up on that front row, baby. Well, I won't make it with this this year, but I know what's coming. But the Mustang, the Champ. See, so you have to have a name for it. It has to be the. The Champ Dixon Mustang. SD. And you know what you better do? When you make the pilot, the pilot better be Gerald Champ. The pilot better be Gerald Champ. Who's not? Well, Gerald contributed to I'm going to take the test flight. Or you, I'll trim it out because you'll have trouble trimming it out. Then you have trouble trimming out one of these things with an old little wing? I mean, come on. Needs a little more polish, a little more spit and polish. Would you put four gallons of this stuff on it? See those buffers? If you buy Wendy videos, you find out how not to get buff throughs. Okay? That's a bus. A, a lousy, a lousy, one Wendy video away from being in the front row here. Well, guys, I'm going to sleep. I know you guys are going to hang out here and keep, 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 keep peeps keep. company. Peeps keep company. Peeps ate his lithium grease. Bob, it really does look good. No kidding. And if you do this quality of work on that Gerald Champ Mustang, I'll tell you. Well, I promise you. We'll see you in the front row. Al Rabe will be your best buddy here. You guys can P-51 it up, man. That's going to be a nice plane. Nice big Sado up in the nose. And no velour in the cockpit. See, just, he's got to learn how to do a cockpit. He's got, you, can't put, you can't put carpeting in a cockpit. Real planes don't have carpeting. All right, what have I got to do? Velour. I'm making you a video on how to do cockpit details, yeah, trust I, me. I, I know that. Your plane will be better than mine, because you're headed there. So we to it. <coughs> Looks good. All right. Keep shining, baby. How about that? that? Key, I love to watch people work. Where's Peeps? Why you, don't you make Peeps do some of that work? On the other side, under the speaker there. Peeps, get over here and turn it. Peeps, hey! Yeah. Oh, he's up on a Dremel tool. He's eating a Dremel tool. Now, he's eating my picture up there. Peeps, hey! And so it was. Hey, do you want that fiber on? So it was that Bob Dixon became a superstar in his own time. And people referred to his brother Tom as Bob's brother instead of Tom. Bob referring to. I'm my Tom's cousin. brother. He's your cousin? Your uncle? What? No, Tom is my second cousin. Oh my I've God. I told you that a billion times. Oh God, the Dixons you are keep, all alike. You keep having Halfheimers on me. All alike. Yeah, we, we want you to get Don Dixon up here. So Don I, Dixon is yeah. a gentleman and a scholar. Well, I know that. Don Aren't Dixon. Most of us. Well, we know not. We know it's not a no hitter now that we know you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dead. Well, with Bob Dixon and Kent and Rudy, we had a fabulous night last night. And we got to feed the fish. Make sure they're not going to starve while we're out flying today. We had some rain. It looks like it may rain more today. But either way, we're going to have a good flying day. Are we going to fly that carbon wing plane? Try to get Woody back in the swim of things? Looks like we're not even going to have to water the plants. And tonight, we're going to come back and have a cookout. Karen's got a little uh, surprise cookout planned for everybody. One of the things we always enjoy is entertaining the other flyers and uh, having, having an opportunity to share uh, with the sport that we love so much with everybody. It's not really Brodak. Brodak entertains 4,000 people. I entertain four. So we still have a great time. It's, it's showtime for the carbon fiber wing. The 
the Stragas have been having babies here. There's one illegitimate one out here that goes backwards. Woo! It looks like we're going to have some air. Good air. Good air? Good air. My motor. How was it relative to where? Well, you were hot down where you are. Yeah, it's hot down there. Yeah, you had to go out on a needle? I had to go out a half a turn. Okay. And then I went back in an eighth, just right. And Pfizer is going to put it through its paces on the first sun pattern flight here. Woody took a flight on it, just level flight. Make sure the tank was on. Oh, that motor's running nice. Oh, yeah. This is, as far as I know, the first span-to-span -span one-piece carbon fiber wing and tail plane. There might be others that we don't know about. Casmanato had that one that had half wings. This is a full-piece wing, and it's not a take-apart plane. And this is Kent on his, what is the first flight. That's the first square loop the plane's ever done, so. Haven't had time to adjust the handle or anything. I think we just guessed at the tip weight last night. We got the foot. It looks pretty good. It really looks pretty level, Woody. I don't know. It's really great. The prop looks weak. I don't like the prop. We got all the props, though. Tiger 60s never seem to like those speed weighted props. But we got plenty of props here, that's for sure. How many head gaskets you got in the motor? It's a big gym, that's your motor. But how many gaskets? I mean, this is a big plane. This is an 800 square inch plane, you know? Well, we'll see when the wind starts blowing later. Right now, it's totally dead. It doesn't look too shabby for a first flight. It's going too slow. It needs a little more drive. It took the middle a bit more than it does, but it's not breaking. Yeah. What does mean? No, we'll get a couple flights on it. Four flights is going to change it. Yeah, it's Jose Modesto, Sato 72 being broken in. Notice the new rubber mount. You, you wanted rubber mounts for your next plane? Here they are. They're only 250 pounds each. We've been giving them an hour. A half hour under 4,000 and a half hour a little bit over. They've been, at that point, they're ready to put in the plane. Keep in mind, I do this for customers. It could be any engine as well as, um, of course, a sale, but any engine, $25 to break it in. One hour. Breaking in Jose's engine, going through a half a gallon of solar fuel. Bob Dixon is going to show us a good trick for setting the idle. Now, the idea is what he does, he's got it. Well, he's got it really idling for a little bit too low. Just to unload the motor. And once he's got it on low, this is to get it really low, like a Wolf Brownell idle. Okay, and what you want to do is pinch the tubing and see a little into it. Yeah, there you go. Oh, you got it. When he pinches the tubing, it's going a little leaner. It increases in RPM and, of course, shuts on. And then you know you've got the, the low-end needle set. Now, Jose is not going to use a throttle, but we'll have it set for him anyway. So this way, when you get your motor back, it should be tuned, broken in, needle valve set. Let's see what kind of idle we get out of it. So that's idling nice right now. I like that. That's really down there. Well, you know you suck. It's nice working with professionals. A good little trick if you're going to use a throttle. That's the tool. Yeah, I know you need a little, I know I got a little tiny screwdriver. Another good little trick you can use on any force stroke. 
Actually, I think you can use it on any motor. You do that on two strokes, too? Will that work on a two stroke? Two strokes. Oh, no, with a carver, yeah. 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 Okay. okay. That's what I put. You want a little bit more RPM? Yeah, a little bit more. We got about another 15 minutes to go on this idle. So we'll take it up over 4,000. <laughs> okay, the next test pilot on the carbon plane is Bob. Basically, everybody's going to get to fly it today. Woody's had. Woody, how many flights you have? And it looks like for the first day out, it's going to be a pretty uh, reasonably nice flying plane. But what we try to do is get feedback from everybody. And the only trim change we've made, we changed the prop. Put on a prop with a little more pitch because it's really getting hot here, because we're in Georgia. And uh, he put a quarter ounce of pit plate in it. Other than that, it's the way, the way it was built, 72 ounces. <laughs> you ready to go, Kent? The Tyson Man! that we get a day that we can fly this long into the day, but today has been one of them. We've just lucked. I guess these guys from North Carolina bring the good weather. Tyson of North Carolina. Flying his version of Strega. Very soon to be a Brodak kit. Powered by a Tiger 60. With a windy tongue muffler. I think he's got a Randy Smith spinner. It's like an international plane. Tommy Looper did the work on the profile of the fuselage, which is a little bit different from my Strega, but plans are available from right from Kent. He's flying his solid lines. We are hoping the weather tomorrow will be just peach eating. But don't hold your breath. It's anything like today, it's just going to be stun heaven. Now the reason they had this contest so early in the season was because our contest traditionally would be the week before Brodax, and it was a problem the week after. And it would hurt both contests to have that, so we kind of compromised with an early May date, and it looks like we've lucked out with the weather. This plane has a really nice corner. I've flown this plane. It is a honey. Got the 2-4 engine brake just about right. Comes around on a dime and doesn't do any funnies. And it has that nice mustang -y look. And boy, we hope Bob Dixon. I know he is. And Gerald, if you're watching this, man, 
It'll be fun to see you playing in the air. We can even talk Bob Dixon into coming up here to trim it out and fly it so we can get it on video. And he said he's going to make the pilot G Shan. And I think that's going to be his lightning bolt up into the real world of stunt. Big time, this. Needs a semi-scale, then bobbles the bottom. Oh, but bobbles too, just to make it look like he didn't do it the first time. There we go. Lock it in, baby. Lock it in. Even a good plane, you still have to fly it. That's the problem. We need to design a plane that you don't have to fly it. Put a computer chip in it or something. There we go, nice bottom, nice bottom. Well, we've been having a lot of fun flying each other's planes. Getting some flights, I think they're up to about 10 flights on that carbon plane, and so far nothing's broken. Nothing seems radically wrong with it. Oh, nice! About time we get a pull out here. Kent is known for his 12-foot hourglass pullouts. Work time, if you look at last year's Nats videos, that was at least spent hours out in the hot sun working on that, and it's hot here today. The boys from the south brought us the heat. Here we go. And I know the times, we've been down to the Atlanta contest twice, and we have been treated royally, so we're trying to treat these guys with some measure of royalty. I don't want to overdo it and make them feel welcome or anything. We've been up in that Spitfire bedroom. He slept in the Spitfire bedroom. Well, not a lot of extra fuel here, Kent. You can't get it down on the mains. Down on the mains. Grease it in, baby. Grease it in. On and up. Uh, not so good. Whoops, whoops, whoops. 32, 31, 28. Keep the tail wheel up, hold the tail wheel up, baby. I can't wait to put those camel cigarettes right up on the dashboard for hours. Anyway, we'll be getting a flight soon. Here's a basically given the majority of the time today to our guests. Get them acclimated to the field. You ready to go there, baby? Yep. All right. So we've seen this on video before, but let's have the show and tell on it. Look at all these push rods. Mamma mia! Ay, 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 ay. Let's see how that works. Give me the show and tell on it, Tom. All right. Tom McLean. Basically, last year I was talking to Joe Amusk on the phone and I was telling him I always wanted to build a 104. He told me he built a MiG-15 with a T-tail. He sent me some pictures of it. So I said, well, heck, why not? Let's give it a try. And so, um, what I basically did was design this from the ground up using some proven numbers from uh, the, uh, it's got a Easy Key Nobler airfoil. Mm. And um, the moment arms come from Billy Suarez's Phantom. Well, for anybody who doesn't know, this is what Tom flew in the military. This was your military plane here? Yeah, my Yep. Okay. So I decided to try it and, and make it as realistic as possible. And I remember on one of your videos you said how Raby would take a projection on the wall right. and match the shape of the airplane to, right. to uh, the uh, numbers. Well, I did that. And so the profile then of the fuselage is very close to the F-104. Uh, but I still had to slide the wing forward to get the center of gravity about right and get the moment arms correct. you got to do some fudging. It's yeah, called a lot of fudging. It's called fudging. You feel like you're working a Dairy Queen by the time you're done. Then I decided to make it take apart. Because I, you know, I, I really, 
again. You know, remember what you did with the sash? Right, right. Oh, the tail comes right off, huh? Yeah, now the reason I did the tail, that's where it got started. Pick that got, up so we can see how you did that. I got two tails for it. Right. Alright. Let's see how that works. Yeah. So this mounts permanently to the plane. Yeah, that plate. Okay. And you're just making a 90 degree guy there. Okay. Okay. Pretty creative. I, I don't think he was a creative guy. Military guys are not supposed, they're supposed to go by the orders. So how does the top come off? I didn't see how that comes off. Alright, you just pull out these two mylon bolts and it slips up. Oh, okay, and then it pegs back, in here. It's got two pegs that slide oh, okay. in. Pretty creative, hey baby? That's uh, kind of like what I did with an RC pattern ship I used to have. And that's Daryl Greenemeyer's paint job. That's a real red baron. He's a red baron. Well, at least we have one red baron left now after uh, the last fiasco with the red baron. Yeah. But, doing a little bit of work on it, it's got nine flights, it's, it was a little bit nose heavy, so I got a little lead in the tail right now, temporarily, mm. to um, get it right. Well boy, if, the, if there's any creativity points left in this event, you're going to get some of them. Uh, and the wing strip. And you got anhedral. And the guys in the club down in Virginia can't believe it. When it, when it flies inverted or upright, they just can't believe it flies level. Dick Macaluso had an anhedral yeah. plane, too. And these things are not coming straight out of the way. They're coming like that. And, and the guys just, hey, that's wild. I don't think any of it matters. I think it's all nonsense. Uh, well, I think Wild Bill Nitsaban, I think, proved that back in the 60s. Yeah, that's fans a pretty great guy, no doubt about it. Anyway, I got a big art OS 40 FP on the front. We really have some photo ops here. Suarez is bringing the real Phantom, his original. All right, I'm gonna get and Bill Hemmel's Billy Blue, the twin to this is the Valkyrie. So we're going to have a day of days. Let's just hope the weather holds. Let's hope these guys from Georgia didn't juice us on the weather. We bought the right one. It's fine, I'll take it. Balancing the blimp on his fingertip as the blimp goes behind the trees. Hey! Bob Lee in the blimp. Give us some warranty art invitations. Hey, you guys are having fun at the Nats. This is the guy that torments warranty art. He deserves all for making warranty art a madman. You guys are having too much fun at the Nats. We'll put an end to that stuff. This is warranty <laughs> I'm sending work to copy this video right away. From Pampa. Don't fly your plane, you crybaby. Who's flying over here? Oh, you, you jack of bone. The carbon wing plane, Woody's got about a half a gallon through it already. This doesn't get a lot better than this.
it looks wild while it's flying. Yeah. And he drill take apart construction. The yeah, anhedral looks cool. The wind is blowing so bad, now it's time for Z-Tron. Whoa, take me out, Tom. This photo shoot is Amy here in her bikini, and we're all set. Not you. <laughs> I said Amy, not Bob. All right, very good. That's okay. A Get some. You're gonna Budweiser light. Go. How many man hours is sitting there? Yeah. How many lives? From Harold Price, who's leading the pack, to Strager coming up the back. Many. <laughs> I 
this is being shot by professional photographer. There's one. Enzo Cordoba here, who's going to guarantee we get this on the cover of, uh, look yeah, at this. Yeah, right. Professional. Anyway, we had a great day. We're off to the Wendy's house for the mandatory barbecue. Karen's barbecue. So here we are at the end of an absolutely beautiful day of flying. One of his friends. We fed them well. The women are talking about us and saying what ignorant goofs we are for staying out in the hot sun all day. And these southern boys <laughs> soaked up the heat. Tom McLean's got a whole bunch of cool pictures here. There's Al Rabe's plane. Yeah, this is Millie. Okay, and Millie, Al Rabe's new Mustang. Why doesn't he come up the boat there? Yeah, good question. Oh man, it looks beautiful. Great. Fantastic. He's got the gear doors painted on. This guy supposedly won the Australian Nationals with a Harold Price Crusader. I never, I didn't, I don't follow that stuff, but. 67. Here's Tom McLean's pet. Mustang paint job. I might do Adamusco's Mr. America like that. That's cool. Oh, that Mr. America is beautiful. He's into some nose art here. What else we got on the, on the, the palette today? Let's see what we got here. We got a lot of cool stuff. Babcock Stingray. Yeah. With the, with the droop tips, the tip tanks or whatever they are. Cool. And of course the one and only. This is out when the we were red out. Baron. Line it for the first time. Yeah. Uh, in Virginia. Run into your starter on a on a twenty point or forty point landing and shoot the right wing off. Yeah, he had a uh, a starter laying right out in the middle of the, the circle now. Six feet out? Six feet out. I guess it wasn't it wasn't far. <laughs> Six, six and a half feet might have done it. And you, now let's see. Here he is. Yeah. The starter hit right here. You can see the whole thing crushed. Went right into the main spar. The I-beam broke it off and then uh, cracked it. It actually broke the I-beam? Yeah. Wow. Well, I hate to see that. Yeah, I had that carbon fiber reinforced too. Yeah. And then uh, after I took that picture, two hours later, I had uh, the tissue stripped off. I had the spar rebuilt. We need you to write this up for crash repairs. Uh, I had to graft in a new leading edge piece. Yeah, right. The trailing edge piece was fine, and then I had to build. Was the flap in one piece? I yeah, the flap see. was in one piece. It was slightly cracked where okay. the horn went into it, but I was able to repair that. Yeah. Uh, the wind came out straight. Uh, I only gained a quarter ounce when, uh, in repairing it. Mm. And uh, you couldn't tell, you can't tell that I repaired it except for one thing. And I'm trying to figure out why this happened, but the green paint that I had, I kept uh, a half a pint. And it was the original paint, the real paint. Ori original paint, yeah. and it was slightly lighter. And I'm, I'm not sure why that happened. So when you look at the plane, you can actually see it, just barely. He, what Tom did is similar to what Al Raby did, is he projected this up onto the wall. Well, I tell you, that you could go crazy with the panel lines on this, huh? Wow. That is a cool profile, though. Now, who is this man? This guy, who does he look like? This is 19, what year is it, did he say? Look at this guy. He looks like Elvis. I think I just saw Elvis building a Stuka. <laughs> you got another picture? Where's that yeah, other yeah, picture? Here it is. Well, you know, it's amazing when you're young what you think looks good. <laughs> in style. The pants, Joe. The pants got to go. Look at, this. <laughs> Look at these pants. Herringbone, oh man. Oh, my God. That Stuka looks good. Say, hey, Jackabone, this is what you got to build. I Let's see that now. magazine. Come on, show them the, show them the Adam Usko oh, thing. Oh, man, this Bardo on the cover. Those. 1970. This would be a paint job for Al Raby, man. That's a killer paint job. Let's... Where's that, where's that Stuka article? There's a Stuka. That's a Sheik's thing, right? Yeah. And he only had flaps in by the wing. Oh, that's a nice looking plane. Is this my Sheik? Yes, I put them in the corner. I don't want to lose it, thank you. I didn't want to put them Yeah, that's a nice looking Stuka. That looks better than Al Newman's, so what's his... Look at this. What's Stuka's, uh... Leonard Newman, not Leonard, what's the kid's name? Oh, it's pretty good. Was it good? Look at that, that's cool. He's got the little radiators on the bottom. Radiators. 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 They're making fun of me. Radiators. Over here. Over here.
That'd be a great thing for a Sato 50. Okay, look, look at this. Well, he's going to be up tomorrow, so you can give him a hard time. Joe is? Oh. Joe's coming up tomorrow? Oh, we're going to... You know what? We'll take that picture and post it on the scoreboard with a sign. Guess who this is, and you win a free trip to Joe Adamusco's birthday party. <laughs> oh, man, that's great. Now, it's little known, it's, it's not widely known, and Mike Jeski graduated from the Windy Artnowski School of Barbecue. <laughs> no tools. If you run out of mustard, you use air epoxy light, no problem. My girlfriend from college, her husband just retired, Colonel McClain. He's Colonel McClain, I don't know. Really? <laughs> plug we finally got the paperwork for Johnny Duncan's business the foam wings we have them in stock Johnny Duncan has them in stock and they are absolutely beautiful as anybody who can uh, who has used one he's got some real nice stuff and it is top quality and the price believe me is right here and it looks like it's absolutely going to be a brutally windy day from looking at the guys that are out practicing. That wind is howling today. But it looks like we got a pretty good turnout. We're just going to walk around and see who's here. Just blew over. That's it. That tells you how windy it is when the chairs are blowing. Yeah, you're good a thing. good, not a good thing. A Doss Stunner is going to do some testing of APC props today. Put it on now. Yeah, put it on. Go get a practice flight and see if it's any good. Yep. The Doss Stunner Sato 56, and he's going to do. I gave him an APC prop to put on there to try. Bye, slob day. Neil, I hope you're going to entertain us. This one's fun, you might want to This one's good? I'm doing great. Money changing hands. I just make a contribution to the club. The least I can do. These are from the AMA. That's you. Yeah, that's AMA. This is AMA. Good. The Rob. And they're apt. We bought a lot of plaques. You know, we have seven contests a year. These are the most affordable and good quality. You know. Yeah, that looks real nice. Look at that. So it shows up. Look at this. Yeah. Everybody told me your plane looked better than Billy Wurridge's. No. Is that true? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Billy doesn't think so either. That yeah, looks good. What are you talking about? That's good. Yeah. That's from his plans, from Billy's plane? Yeah. How's it fly? Good? Yeah. Great. Yeah. yeah, I never saw Billy's in real life. It looks real nice, though. Yeah. Well, you see him on the front. What is that? Got one flap horn or two? Or one of those one, bent things? One, bent? One, right straight across. Works fine. Tempting the wind guys. Rudy Ryder. It is brutally windy here, baby. It's too early to be flying. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> With that sound you were making this morning when you woke up. Not me.
This is our Garden State Circle Burner food cooler. Complete with Budweiser beer box. You know, for somebody who didn't know that we were church going folk, they might think yeah. hazardous waste. Hazardous waste and Budweiser beer. <laughs> Well, Henry, you made it to the windy videos. Now, we know you made this plane from a Cardinal kit. Yes. Yeah, so and of course, it has a, a... This is a modified Cardinal. Modified Cardinal. Modified very slightly Cardinal. modified. <laughs> modified. Oh, man. Poor Lampion. Looks like it flew okay. It was a little fast, but... Uh... Yeah, you better be better not be slow today. <laughs> yeah, it looks nice. You get Bobby to autograph it for you? I'm waiting to do that. He wants to see the fly. Is he going to fly it for you? No. <laughs> no, he's a little star 40. 48 hours. Oh, Secret propeller. Bob? Secret, yeah. Yes. I've got a whole band full of secret propellers. Secret pitch, secret fill. Secret, yeah. You take the numbers off and don't tell anybody what they are. That's what it is. Ah. Armor all spray. Oh, oh, yes. And when you when you make the plans for the magazine, you're going to distort the wing and yes. make the t move the tail moment back. Oh, you must be an old timer. He's a professional model stove. Look at yes, this. That's exactly the professional. I mean, you're not amateurs. No, no, you have no, to be no, professional no, to no, use no. this stove. Right? Mm -hmm. oh, it's amazing over the years how we've uh, progressed. I remember this. I remember this stove when I was seven years old. We've become less dangerous. <laughs> and the wind is getting worse by the moment. What is this? Take apart construction technology? Yeah. Look at this! Look at this! It's a twister! Oh, it's twisted, all right. Look at this! And what are all these things on the wires? Remote glow drivers? Oh, yeah! On a profile? I wanted to try it. Yeah. Wow! I didn't know you guys were so high-tech! Well, I put a little um, nylon screen on top of the... Yeah, nylon stocking. Yeah. Yeah. Bill Hummel flying the Valkyrie. And Ken Clapson, I hope you enjoy the fact I sent you two sets of plans, baby. Get this thing building. It's a good flying plane. Nice Sato 56 in there. Nice big three-bladed prop. Mr. Austin, you don't mind that I showed those pictures on video, do you? Uh, no, that Stoker looks good, by the way. You to I think he should build that. He's fooling around. That was a good airplane. Those, those little chic Stoker. Those little bitty flaps, that thing turned. Had a good car. And it might not be the kind of airplane we want to build. So he wants, he's not, he doesn't care, he wants a Stoker. And it already has that short nose on yeah, it. Yeah, put that Sato 56 in there. Oh, yeah. I'm hip. Hey, there's some and are you, these are... But see, only 200 people in the world have ever seen this, and you're this have this airplane airplane. Has square tips. Look okay. at these nose cones on there. Special motors? Spe R2800s. Oh! These big spinners. Look at that. And, uh... Now, this is a special B25. Yeah, they have a number. I, I have more information on it, but let's see, uh... And this was taken at Wright Patterson yeah, Airport. Yeah, back to the Yeah, there was a Mustang back there. Ah! But I have the short nose, big gun, 50 calibers. But the whole idea behind this process was to get an airplane that could have increased low-level attack speed. Right. And 
uh, they were able to get it, but unfortunately, the one of a kind, the pilot and co pilot crashed, and they both got killed. Wow. The project died. But there's a version, you know, square tips, and they say that the tips are almost like uh, P 51 shaped tips. Right, right. But there's no plan view, and this is all we can get our hands on, so. Yeah, yeah. And this is from Boeing from the archive. Boeing archive. Wow. So, I don't know, you want to. Yeah, let me borrow them. Yeah, I don't want to see to the truck. I'll put them up on my shop wall and think about it. Okay. You want to fly? I got some APC props to try if you want to. Yeah, I'm okay. Flight. I'm just going to go with what I got. Oh. I didn't fly. No, I mean to take them home. And, and well, fly. you gave me one. Oh, I gave you one. Okay. Do All some right. APC tests for me. Let me know how it works. Mr. What awesome. I'm going to do is I got to send. What I'm going to do. I'm waiting for Glenn Keller to uh, get his Vulcan in the air, test the air. It's a copy of Billy Rourge's Vulcan. It looks real nice in the air, too, Glenn. Nice save. Thank you. Nice save. Hi. <laughs> thank, thank you, Tom McLean, for helping me build that wing. I couldn't have built it without him. That Tom, McClain, that Tom McLean is an okay guy. Okay guy. Okay, hey, guy. Ken Clapson's adding his name to the list of people building Valkyries. Yeah, I got a nice email from him. Yeah, he's hot. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to see how that would fly with a Sato 56. Oh, here we go. Here we go. That'd be more. You know, Harold had a 49 Merco in his. 49 Merco, yeah. Yeah, that was the later version. Uh, yeah, I think, I think, uh, you said you can wish it for this stuff. I think it's just good to get through. It's really, really good. We added one, added one rib to it. So I went to a practical landing room and I found that mark on the well, Clapson, you're going to add your name to the list of Valkyrie owners. Wow. The Valkyrie Owners Club. Yeah, the only, the only difference between that and this is he went and put a different body on it and uh, put it put there yesterday and it was doing really well. Excellent. Right. Yeah, you don't get guys asking you if it's a modified nobler or anything. Really? Right. No, he did. He yeah, they're going to have the pilot's meeting soon. Hey, Glenn, can you give me a watch? Personal favorite plane, the Valkyrie.
sort of thing. And sadly enough, this is the last day at the end of this contest. We have to put the barrels back and we don't get to use the field again with all three circles going. There are times we've had four here. And we would not be back at this field. We're going to start our grass field flying. Actually, as of tomorrow. Joe Adamusco getting ready to put up the Miss Awesome. Seventy-two would fit right in there. I could have that in by the time you, by the time you guys have the contest finished, we could be flying. Banjack, let's see it, man. I gotta see this fly. I've been telling everybody I'm cool it. Don't make a monkey out of me. How's it going, Wendy? Doing great. Is that cool? Oh man, this is cool. That's Tom McLean cool. <laughs> I like it. Push I like it. You gotta use it like I haven't seen it fly yet. I gotta get it on video. Boy, don't you fly it without me videotaping okay. it. Wow. Man, no. you'll be... The way you start it, you turn it upside down, yeah. and then you just reach in and flip. This is a push. I had to sound it. It's a pusher. On here and on the engine's in backwards, just, it's, a it's a pusher. Supports that we saw a magazine. Hey, Dan, there's a magazine yesterday. Tom has the magazine. This thing's on the cover. This... The real version of this. Oh, I'm on my Tom, it's on that thing. Hey, the magazine oh, you had hey, in that oh. at the at the party last night. Oh, that's somebody else's magazine. Well, uh, don't give it back to him. Give it to him. Don't let honesty get in the way of your modeling career. Jack of Bones got that magazine. Okay, Jack. See, Jack. Jack of Bones. That magazine in Adamusco with the with the the Stuka? What do you call it? This is a Farman F. It's almost an F-A-R-T. <laughs> yeah. I guess the paint's cracking a little. Oh, this week of Boulder's had a carbon fiber for the next one. <laughs> but I finally, it took me a while to find a little... Brian, you're going to get all the World War I planes. Hollow aluminum shaft, two Preston steel fittings, keys. When you want, the nice thing is after you take the cowling off, if you undo the back of the prop washer and the bolt, the four bolts of the engine, the engine shaft slide right out. The tank's got a half moon cutout so the shaft runs through it to keep the tank at the right height. And the control system, and the control system's got a torque rod. The belt line hook to it is on a piece of eight inch mule. Okay, Bobby, where's the push rod? Show me the push rod. Come on, another push rod. Come on, where's the push rod? Where's the push rod? Up the tubes. <laughs> Up the tubes, baby. <laughs> this band jock's a pretty cool guy. Hey, is how'd you do this stuff? I got it. That's real modeling. I like that. That is real model. That's cool. Is and this is an extension the from here to there. Yeah. Holy shit. He's a genius. Today. Look at what I like. If, if you didn't know this was a pusher prop and you put an ordinary prop on it, ruin your whole day. <laughs> I think that's slick as can be. They gotta get all the World War One planes in a pile here. There's Brian. Get a photo of the World War One bombers. We got the P-51, the one, the only. <laughs> Standing move we didn't predict. Danny brings the Walker Cup or whatever the Ryan. And he doesn't even have to win it, he just gets to take it home again. That wasn't so smart. I hope I have to take it home. If you if you forget to bring it next time, you're really in trouble. You bring it when you don't need it. You won last year, right? Yeah. Okay, oh, yeah. good show. Yeah. This guy's gonna get shot, no no the, the Danny's gonna fly do the dynamic duo here. Oh great. Mistakenly thinking there was a concourse award. Bob Dixon is busy waxing his plane. Come on, let's fly! Using up all my good air here. Isn't blowing even 50 miles an hour now. It's going to get better. It feels like it's puffing down. It's going to be down to 40 pretty soon. 
We're gonna make the fly first. Your scores will be posted there. That's the fly. To yeah, I'd like to get yeah. Oh yeah. This is Bill Suarez is the real F4, the real one. He brought it out to do a photo op with uh, Tom McLean today. And here's the modern version. What motor is in there, Tom? At ABC. So they're going to do a photo op later with the two uh, Phantoms. This is the life of the photographer. You can never get the two guys coordinated. Of course, you get the age on the right side. That's a great photo. Freeze frame photo. Which one is heavier? That looks good, Bob. Mine. <laughs> By two ounces. Thank you. Up, yeah, there was two articles in one minute. Can you imagine that? Yeah, forget it. You can't even get one now. He was so, so impressed with my Z-Tron flight that he made his own hat up with a propeller on top. Bob Lampione flying, whatever the Cavalier I think this is, but I'm not sure. Maybe it's something close to a Cavalier. propeller on the hat to match the plane though. That's a key. If you want to be a Z-Tron dealer, you got to match your hat. And I still think my hat's dumber looking than yours. <laughs> but you're dumber looking than me, so it's a tie. It's a draw then. <laughs> we, we both lose. It's a draw. Bobby, the plane looks great. That's nice. It's a nice airplane. Yeah, it looked like it flew great. Did Tom build this or did you build it? Once I learned how to fly it, it'll be good. What? Right? Did Tom... Tom did the framing and you can a Tom Morris playing. Beautiful. Dedicated to my sweet Lorraine. I like it. As some people might not know, Bobby's not in the best of health, and it's good to see him out here having some uh, some fun with the boys, the people that he loves the most. A very, very attractive paintwork, and, and has all Tom Morris's stuff top level. Really nice. Well, we flew our first competition flight with the Z-Tron here and used the throttle in flight and so we're, we're kind of happy the way it, uh, it all worked out. Belly having his shoes shine during a flight by Danny Banjak reading him the old time pattern. This is an ignition engine, a real ignition one, not a repro. Not sure which one it is. I'm not up to speed on ignition stuff, but a, a real ignition engine, not a uh, a copy or whatever they call the repro guys. Bob Zambelli, one of the innovators of the four-stroke technology. Well, on this flight, we used. Uh, well, we still have one flight left. We used the um, the Bob Zambelli muffler with the downspout. So that's the first competition flight for the Muffler and for the, uh, the Z-Tron. Glenn Keller's Vulcan. The Red Reinhardt Cup that they'll be flying off at the end of the contest. The winner of each class tries to up his score, and the, whoever does that the most last year it was Dan Dandrak. We'll get to take the cup home and engrave their name on it to keep the cup for one year. Yeah, quit while he was inverted.
end this tape, and we're right up on the end of the tape. We'll try to get whatever we can of Tom McLean's flight. First official flight with the Harold Price Crusader. One of my personal favorite planes. Kent just went to get some stuff. Tell Kent what you need, juice? No, I'm okay. Okay. About you. No, no, I'm all set. Kent's going to get some juice. Hope you enjoyed the video. We have room. Well, we, we're going to try to shoot some more footage as the contest goes on for the next tape. But basically, this is the end. I hope you'll share the tapes with your friends and share the adventure of Control Line Stunt. I always thought that wing shape was just the sexiest thing. Tom McLean has done a great job of replicating the real Crusader and Billy Suarez's Phantom.